yeah, so we just come up to Old Serum Castle and quite high up. This is the original Salisbury. Looks like there's some loos over there. Huge car park. We're a little bit early. I can just make out Salisbury Cathedral Spire in the distance over there. You won't see it on the GoPro. And there's the castle up there. We brought the car. Uh, probably could have walked. It's not too far, about a mile and a half. But we're going to go on to Salisbury anyway. What's the story about well, this? Well, well, what I know so far, this is the original settlement. I think Romans were here. Yeah. So an Iron Age fort. There was a castle built um, in William the Conqueror's time, a wooden one. Yeah. And then uh, they moved the, the original cathedral was here. And they moved it to Salisbury in 12. 27. All right. So that's why there's a sign as you come into Salisbury that says welcoming pilgrims, visitors and since since 1227 because yeah. before that they were they were welcomed here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you missed our previous videos, we're actually staying at Salisbury Car camping and caravanning club site which is over there Just somewhere. Just over there somewhere. And uh, we've been reviewing a camper van. So we've not much, had much time for actually getting out and about. So it's Sunday. Is it Sunday the 4th of July? And uh, we're out and about. Hope you spotted another dog. Yeah, so it says 5,000 years ago, Chalk Hilltop was treated by local people with respect and reverence. It was Later it was turned into a powerful hill fort by Celtic people who farmed the surrounding countryside. In the years following the Roman invasion, a mil military post, post was built nearby. Important road junction lay just outside the eastern gateway of the old fort, and a small town grew up along the road that led southwards towards Dorchester. And after the Roman legions left, the Celtic fort and the area around it became a Saxon royal estate. When the Viking army burnt the nearby town of Wilton in 1003, the fort gave shelter to the townsfolk and security to the royal mint. By the time William Conqueror decided to build the castle in front of us, Old Sarum had already had a place in history. It carried on sending MPs. Westminster until 1832. Oh yeah, it's one, it's of, one these of these rotten boroughs. Rotten boroughs. No, yeah. no voters, just a, just MPs. Just an MP. <laughs> yeah, Isn't politics wonderful. <laughs> Bobby, come back. <laughs> Bobby, can you just come back a bit? Yeah, come back. Oh yeah, that's it. So the earth banks in front of you are the remains of the castle founded by William the Conqueror and enhanced by successive kings of England. Originally the banks would have been f faced with timber, wooden planks covered with plaster and whitened with lime. Over the next hundred years the castle was rebuilt in stone and for a while it was regarded as one of the most beautiful buildings in England served as a royal residence, an administrative centre, courthouse and jail. Here from time to time, Henry II imprisoned Queen Eleanor, uh, Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine, his queen. The bridge in front of you is modern, replaces the original wooden bridge into the castle and here guards would have asked you for your business, and might have even searched you before allowing you across. There more guards would have questioned you again before allowing you into the gatehouse and the castle. Yeah, we didn't time. Oh, don't worry, no. Yeah, there's the moat, huge moat, and the modern bridge. Um, the original cathedral. Yeah. All right. Um, and the Iron Age rampart. It's good to get up on there if you can. Yeah, that give you a good perspective on the original Iron Age ditch, the outer ditch. Um, so, um, yeah, it depends how much time you've got. <laughs> mm, got ourselves a guidebook. As well, it's actually more than I thought here. Do you oh. think it was just an Iron Age fort? Well, I thought there wasn't. I d yeah, I didn't really realise there was that much here. So it says here, a busy courtyard, this grassy open space was the bustling courtyard of the royal castle, and paved paths ran between the main buildings. 
and elsewhere surfaces would have been cobbled or filled with gravel. Tall buildings rose all around and servants would have rushed backwards and forwards and the sound would echo off the walls. Courtyard would look like a small town. Tall building in front of you was the Great Tower, probably built about 1110 to 1120 as a residence for King Henry I. To the right was a palace and its buildings set around a small square courtyard. Much, this much more luxurious complex was probably built for King Henry by his ambitious Chancellor Rod, Roger of Caen by about 1130. In the 16th century all the buildings were dis demolished, all the smooth facing stones were taken away to be used elsewhere and only the rough flint core work of the walls was left. Look, rabbit holes pops, come on, come on, you take the uh, guidebook off me, thank you. Oh wow. <laughs> There's a few dress stones left, aren't there? Bobby, can we go our way? Me? Yeah. She does love a castle. I think that was. You're going to tell me, eh? Most looks like an altar or font here, maybe. Church? Be my guess. There's a chapel here. Yeah, I think this was possibly the chapel. It's certainly got these sort of the dress stones, hasn't it? Yeah. Like you say, the, just left the uh, rough flint walls. No, how do you reckon, Pops? <laughs> <laughs> this way, you can go through here now, Pops. Thank you. Yes, yeah, this is the lower high... chapel. Is that low? Is that lower chapel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the chapel of St Margaret, nave and chancellery were both vaulted and the side walls were probably originally decorated with carved arcading. An altar stood in an arched alcove at the far end. The chapel may have served the servants and the garrison of the castle. Above it, on the first floor of the royal palace, was the chapel of St Nicholas, which is larger and grander than this one and served the royal family when they were in residence. Yeah, it says in the 12th century a few visitors would have gone beyond this point, only those granted an audience with the king or his officials would have entered a building to your right and climbed the stairs to the upper courtyard. Uh, that level was a royal palace. Reconstruction and illustrations on this panel explain in more details in other parts of the castle, but some of these places are steep and not easy to reach. Come on. The castle's back entrance. Okay. The narrow passage between the great tower and courtyard was the way back into the castle. It's now possible to climb up the tower from here, but it wouldn't have been possible in the Middle Ages. At that time, visitors would have had to go up the stairs to the courtyard palace and then more stairs to a door in the upper part of the tower. Go on then, Pops, we'll go up there. Unless you're halfway up there anyway. Grief, look at this. Even more. Getting a bit of a view now. Oh wow, that's the old cathedral then, down yeah. there. We'll go down there a little bit later. This is the King's Great Tower. So this was the King's Great Tower. 
when the courtyard came into use, the Great Tower stopped being the main living accommodation for the king, nevertheless is one of the largest buildings in the castle, also the most easily defended. If all else failed, the defenders could negotiate their final surrender from here. From the level of the courtyard palace, a wide flight of steps rose to a door on the first floor of the tower and for extra security top of the steps and the land they were enclosed in a smaller tower built against the side of the building. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. See them there. Not much of it remaining. But yeah, start to see some of the views. Wow. It's going to be a bit uh, close, isn't it? Does he go skydiving, right? There's a skydiving centre, yeah. Yeah. So this is the royal residence, the most public part of the palace. And for climb, after climbing the stairs from the lower co courtyard, you would have found yourself in a large waiting room. From here, they would have been shown into the hall. At the far end, there would have been a raised platform with a king or its officials set, and everyone else had to stand. On great occasions, the king would entertain his barons in the hall, a fire would be lit in the middle of the room, and tables and benches would be set up at either side. After the meal, the king would go out of the hall, along the cloister abbey, and into his chamber. Uh, special guests here would be entertained. On the far side of the garden, opposite the Grey Hall, lay the king's private suite. There was probably a separate day room and bedrooms. And access to the royal chamber of St Nicholas. To your left, at the far end of the range, a tall keep-like tower contained the toilets. OK. Would have been over there then. Okay, let's carry on going round then, girls. So this is about the cathedrals of Old Sarum. The ruined walls in front of you are all that remains of a comfortable residence that once stood in the outer bailey of the royal castle. The cathedral was first built here in 1075 and 10, between. 1075 and 1092. Five days after it was consecrated, it was damaged in a storm and had to be repaired. The cathedral was rebuilt on a much larger scale by Bishop Roger in about 1120-1130. Beside it was a cloistered garden and beyond the garden lay the official residence of the first bishops of Salisbury. By 1250 both the cathedral and the palace had been demolished, leaving only the foundations that you see before you. Yeah, stunning views here. So girls, this is the Royal Privy. Yeah. Eh? That's what it says there. <laughs> all right, all right, okay, I'm back. Yeah, so the Royal Palace was provided with several sets of toilets and most of them were built on this side of the King's private suite. They weren't flushed by water, instead the waste fell into deep pits filled with straw and bark chippings. And when the king wasn't in residence, someone was lowered in there to dig it all out. Come up, go down the stairs and up the stairs. <laughs> I think she just worked that one out. You have, to, you have to check, don't you, Pops? <laughs> it says there, the room's above your head. Right. <laughs> so when the castle was abandoned in the 16th century, the upper parts of the Great Tower were demolished. You can only guess what they must have looked like. They have contained a hall, several chambers, perhaps a private chapel for the king and queen. In the later 12th century, King Henry II had a new extension built to the tower, it contained his dressing room and toilet and treasury.
He said, you've entered the basements of the Great Tower in a way that wouldn't have been possible in the Middle Ages. Originally, you would have had to climb the stairs to the level of the Courtyard Palace, up more stairs on the second floor of the tower, and then down another set of stairs to a ladder, a ladder where you are now. This room was part of a two-room storage basement when the new courtyard was built about 1130. This part of the Great Tower may have been used as a prison since it was the most secure place in the castle. In this way, the Norman word donjon, meaning lordly house, turned into dungeon, meaning prison. Yeah. See, it was built on chalk. Yeah, so you can see that, what that would have been like going all the way up there. Yeah, by the early 13th century, changes in the way the palace and great tower had been used meant another hall was needed. The building of which uh, only a few foundations survive was probably built for King John about 1201 to 1208. It may have been used as a courtyard. However, the new hall was sometimes used for entertaining since there was a kitchen and bakery beside it. But with pointed arches and the new Gothic style, um, the new hall must have presented quite a contrast to the other buildings in the castle. The hall was never properly maintained. It was already in need of repair by 1247 and in 1307 the roof fell in. Though the walls were still standing in 1330, its remains were discovered by excavation in, 11, uh, in 1911. Hmm. Another skydive, oh, several skydivers now over there. You won't see them on the GoPro, but oh, we can see them. Five of them, one, two, three, four, five. Good day for it as well, I suppose, isn't it? Not too windy. Good day. Yeah. That would probably terrify me, that would. <laughs> Come on, let's go up on the walls. Quite some views, eh? If you can see our van down, oh, grief. Yeah, it's a sheer drop there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, either side, yeah. you're in lumber. Nice. Mm. You can just about see the uh, the auto explore there. <laughs> no, the other way, Pops. Down here. Yeah, it says the beginning of Salisbury. It says when William the Conqueror built his castle here, church and state formed a close partnership. It was understandable that cathedrals should be built on the outer bailey of the royal castle. 150 years later, things were very different. The church and the state were at loggerheads, and for a while, King John was excommunicated by the Pope. The bishop and his clergy wanted to enlarge the cathedral and rebuild it to a more modern style. To do this, they needed money, and this could be most easily found by establishing a new market town nearby on the bishop's own property. The result was a new town of Salisbury, where a new cathedral was built in 1220. You can see the spire of the cathedral from here. Down the uh, the old, oh, the new bridge. New bridge, yeah. New draw bridge. <laughs> Except you can't draw it anymore. <laughs> we'll go and have a look at the old cathedral. Yeah, this is talking about William the Conqueror inherited Old Sarum from the last Saxon king of England. Already defended and beside an important road junction, it was an ideal site for a royal castle. The great outer defences provided him with a ready-made arena for mustering troops, and it was here in 1070 that he paid off his army and a bitter campaign after a bitter campaign in northern England. It was here too in 1086 he called together all the major land holders in England so they could swear allegiance to him. And it was a crucial moment. Doomsday book was just being written. A threatened Viking invasion had only just been inverted, uh, averted, 
and William's eldest son was in armed rebellion. Never was it more important for the Norman King of England to be seen in all his majesty. Yeah, so soon after the conquests of England, William the Conqueror and Lanfranc, the new Archbishop of Canterbury, set about reorganising the English church. 1075, a church council authorised the relocation on the bishop, bishopric of Sherborne to the outer bailey of the king's castle at Old Serum. Bishop Osmond, the king's nephew, supervised the building of the new cathedral, but in 1092, tragedy struck just five days after it being consecrated, the cathedral was struck by lightning and seriously damaged. Osmond's successor, Roger of Caen, set about rebuilding the cathedral with the same energy as showed in providing the king with a new courtyard palace inside the castle. He kept the nave of Osmond's cathedral, but rebuilt the eastern end on a much grander scale. He also rebuilt the bishop's palace, which lay to your right, beyond the site of the cathedral cloister. We probably can, but take a round step with the stone there. It's up 16th century, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, the monastery was 15, 16 Yeah, and you didn't take the stone away, and it wasn't a monastery, so... It no, no, all... I thought I'd read that he granted permission. Oh? Huh? It was still a royal palace, I think. Okay. He didn't put the concrete in here either, did he? No, no, he didn't do that. Come on now. So obviously marking out where the walls would have been. Yeah. Got to take the foundation. Right yeah. As well. Yeah. There's a map here. We said. There we go. Old Sarum Cathedral was demolished in favour of the new one at Salisbury, begun in 1220, and but it wasn't until 1834 that people noticed marks in the grass that showed where the old cathedral had been. Excavations in 1912 to 1914 reveal the foundations you see here today. Bishop Osmond's Cathedral would have been quite small. Between uh, 1110 and 1135, Bishop Roger doubled its size by enlarging the transepts and adding a huge new eastern extension. These provided a setting for more elaborate ceremonies that had become part of the church liturgy by this time. The cathedral reached its greatest extent 50 years later when Bishop Jocelyn de Bern, Bern, Bern added an impressive new west front with large corner towers. At the north side of the cathedral at a lower level lay the cloister with ab Alleys set around an open garden and beyond the cloister stood the bishop's palace, very similar in the layout to the palace Bishop Roger built for King Henry I within the castle. It too was excavated in 1912 to 1914 but is now completely covered in grass. Oh yeah, so up there is the high altar. Uh, two, in, right in front of us is the choir. Behind us is the nave. Yeah, and you yeah. can see the columns, can't you? Yeah. Would have been there four. Yeah, and three would have been the library over there, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And over there would have been the cloister. You can still see the outline of it. You can, yeah. A bit of a wall. Yeah. So uh, look over the, the hill there. Patrolled by the rooks now. Oh yeah. So you can sort of imagine the, the walking round the cloister there. Because that's about all you can do really, isn't it? <laughs> Have a look over the, over here. Sign says putting England on the map. 1794, the Ordnance Survey set out to check the accuracy of the first mapping of southern England, which it began ten years earlier. From a point just below Old Serum, Lieutenant William Mudge laid out a baseline 36,574 feet long. From the end of each line, the positions of distant places were plotted using a huge theodolite. 
made in 1791 by Jesse Ramsden. I just wanted to film the way in, well, in our case, the way out. If you were thinking of bringing a motorhome up here. I mean, there is parking up there, but uh, why not fast this road up here? But it's okay. Right, so we're going to head off to Salisbury itself. Yeah, New Salisbury. <laughs> well, Salisbury. Yeah. Okay. So that's right. City centre. <laughs> 